FBLA PBL members. My name is Max Mitchell, and I serve as the 2017-2018 FBLA National President. Welcome back to our FBLA PBL Week interview series. Today, I'm here with Donnie Iorio, who serves as an FBLA Southern Region Vice President and a PBL National President. To introduce himself further, I'm going to hand it over to Donnie, and we're going to learn more about him. Hey, Max. Thanks for having me. And uh, yeah, I was the 2010-2011 FBLA Southern Region Vice President, and then I served two terms as the PBL National President um, when I went to the University of South Carolina. Awesome. Well, let's get started. Uh, my first question to you is how long have you been in FBLA PBL and what inspired you to get involved? Uh, well, I started as a high school freshman in a brand new high school and that was in 2007. So over 10 years now. Um, and yeah, the time flies, right? But uh, I started just as a member and we actually chartered our chapter because we were a brand new high school. Um, and I just was looking for something to get involved in. So I didn't really know what was going to be best for me. I knew that I, I wanted to study business or that's kind of what I wanted to do. Um, and I like leadership. So two words were in, the, were in the title. So I figured I'd go for it. And um, that's kind of just how I jumped in. Awesome. Well, thank you for sharing that. Um, my second question to you is how has FBLA PBL influenced your college and career decisions? So FBLA was really influential in how I decided what I was going to do um, when I studied, which was business. It confirmed that I really enjoyed the, the challenge of having to find a creative solution to a difficult problem. Um, you know, we have so many resources in FBLA, like our advisors, our business partners. I know my advisor was someone um, who still is very close to me, um, who helped me make these tough decisions of where I was going to go to school and what I wanted to study. Um, and so I climbed the ranks in FBLA, I was very involved, moved to a school without an active chapter, um, and then immediately when I started, I realized it was something I missed. And so from there, started a PBL chapter and uh, became part of my life once again. So now that you're going to your 11th year of FBLA PBL involvement. <laughs> 11th year. I know, it's just, I'm sure the time flies and that's, what, does. They, that's what they always tell uh, everyone. But um, what kind of success stories have you heard you know, over the 11 years of your involvement in FBLA PBL? I think one of the coolest things now in my current role is I get to do some hiring um, of some really great, smart um, college hires that are looking for that next challenge. And uh, what's really cool is I have seen people that have come uh, across my interview desk and they have that FBLA experience. And we have that bond to share, but then it, it's really inspiring to hear all the, the new things that members are doing um, that will be that next big thing, right? And, and to see the things that they've done while a member is just really inspiring for me in my current role. So what are some things that you've been able to benefit from as an FBLA member and then as a PBL member? Um, so as an FBLA member, I, I think it's, not only did you have the friends, right, that all kind of were like-minded, um, like, I don't wanna say career-oriented, but future-oriented in high school, like, you don't really know what you wanna do, but you kind of know, like, that you want a future and that you want to be a leader. So that really helped me in high school. And then in college, it, it kind of helped me with my networking. So I have friends now that I met through PBL that I work with, um, some that I still associate with just outside of my like single scope business world and just you know as a person. So I really do think that FBLA and PBL are both you know giving back to me still 11 years later. So as an FBLA member and a PBL member, what are some tips and advantages that you would tell high schoolers in FBLA right now as to why they should join PBL in college? Sure. So like when I went to high school, it was a medium large size high school, about 1,600 students, um, and maybe 15, 20 clubs or organizations, FBLA being one of them. And then when I went to university that had up to 70,000 people um, attending the same university, there's a lot more than just 20 clubs, right? There's hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of organizations that you can be involved in. And you can be involved in more than one. Uh, when I went to university and then joined PBL, what was really great for me was I still had that, that sense of belonging that I had from FBLA in high school, and I still was able to associate and interact with people from across the country that shared the same leadership and drive that I had. Um, and that was just, that was something that helped me in other um, classes and organizations that I was a part of in college. Awesome, and serving as an FBLA national officer and a PBL national officer for the course of three years, what are some tips that you would give maybe people who are interested for running or people who are currently national officers um, in terms of carrying out their duties and being able to fulfill the mission of the organization? Yeah, so I think one of the coolest things about student leadership is 
Um, I, I don't, a lot of people assume like when you're on stage or when you're doing these, these um, videos, like, gosh, he's like in that blue jacket, he has a lot of power, but in reality, you don't, right? It's, it's an influence position. And that's the cool thing about student leadership is that it teaches you to influence others rather than just have power over others. So when you fast forward 11 years and you are in a role where you have people reporting to you, uh, you're the boss, right? Yeah, you can just tell people what to do. You can tell people what to do and they're gonna do it because it's their job. Um, maybe they're not gonna do it well because you haven't influenced them and had them buy into the idea why it's so important. But even more importantly is you're going to work with people that don't report to you, right? You're gonna work with other departments, other companies, coworkers, um, and you're going to need them to be successful, right? It's not just it's not just you. And that's what the coolest thing about FBLA and PBL did for me is it taught me to work with my peers, listen to peers, listen to other ideas, but then also give that influence. And so that way we can make impactful change that everybody's bought into rather than people just doing it because they have to. Awesome. And after having gone through FBLA and PBL, you still mentioned that you continue to volunteer with an FBLA PBL. Why do you continue to volunteer? Well, I mean, FBLA and PBL gave so much to me, um, really defined a lot of who I am that I just, I feel like it's right to give back, but then also I love giving back and going back. Um, so I work with a couple of states and it's so great that the, the members continue to blow me away. Things that members do today in 2018 are things that like in 2011, I don't think I could have done, right? To, to see us always pushing that limit, raising that bar, um, it's really like empowering for me. And so it's rewarding for me, but also like it's, it's the right thing to do so that way there's that professional tie-in with the FBLA members. Perfect. And, and shifting away from FBLA PBL, what is your current position? What do you work as? You know, what, is, what do you do today uh, as, a, as your job? Yeah, I'm an inventory control and quality assurance manager for Amazon based here in Florida. Interesting. And how is FBLA kind of, I think you touched on this with influence and inspiring people to do work, but how has FBLA PBL directly uh, impacted your ability to network and connect with people in your role? Well, I think the first thing is I'm not shy going up to, to anyone and introducing myself and learning a little bit about what they do, um, understanding how it interacts with what I do, but it, it all goes back to the influence. I mean, I'm in a role where um, I have to be able to influence others in order to get things done. And influence isn't like, you know, waving like a hypnosis, like clock or anything like that. It's just being able to sell your idea, but listen to other people's input and then make change from there. And that's something that I was really fortunate to learn in high school with FBLA. And so I, I'm kind of tying into that same point. Um, some challenges that you face at your job today, how has FBLA kind of facilitated that transition from college to the workforce for you? I think, especially when I was new in my career, um, the biggest thing that I mentioned that helped me from the start was being able to interact with people. So when you're in FBLA, when you're in PBL and you go to a national conference, you're around thousands and thousands of people from all over the world, right? And you all are a part of something common, FBLA, but you're all still very different, but you're able to, to find that, that common bond, develop friendships and working relationships, which was helpful as a national officer. And that's something that really helped me when I moved into my role um, you know, as a young professional. Awesome, and thank you for, th for sharing that. Uh, I know something that you had mentioned earlier is that you chartered a chapter at your high school. Um, for FBLA members who are starting chapters or who are recruiting members, what is one tip or a couple of tips that you would give them to get their chapter up and running? Uh, so the first thing that I think is the most important is like you got to give your advisor some TLC, right? Your advisor, our advisors are really hardworking. Um, I remember how much work my advisor put in um, and how much work that they do, but it's important that they're not the only one doing the work, right? You have to have a really good group of student leaders who are um, planning events, like doing the work behind it. And so the advisor is there to help advise and help, you know, guide the team. But really, if it's the advisor doing all the work, like it's not gonna be sustainable. So I'd say the number one thing that you can do is support your advisor so that way um, they can see the true benefit of their chapter that they're helping build too. Awesome, and remember, Advisor Appreciation Day is this Wednesday for during FBLA PBL Week, and it's every Wednesday during FBLA PBL Week, so be sure to give back to your advisor, as he mentioned. Now, going to our final couple of questions, what is one distinctive memory that you have from FBLA, and then one distinctive memory you have from PBL? Oh, boy. Um, I'd probably think my national conference, um, when, when that, that music plays at the end of your last conference, um, and the officers are saying goodbye, 
Um, I, I didn't think that I was going to get emotional. I didn't think that I was going to, to tear up, but it really hit you, right? Because you think in FBLA, um, all the hard work you put in for four years, and now you have a, an awkward recording of you playing in the background, um, saying goodbye. Like you start having your life flash before your eyes of everything that you've worked for that's now going away. Um, and I remember that hit me. I remember um, my whole team being together and, and thinking of how great of a year we had. But the good news in FBLA is that it's not over, right? Because you have PBL. Um, and so in PBL, I think chartering that chapter again and then working with my local chapter um, to charter a local chapter, run very successful March of Dimes programming um, that gained thousands and thousands of dollars, um, and then moving into a national role with my small chapter um, 100% behind me, like that was super influential. And I had great national officer teams, absolutely, but just remembering the journey to get there in PBL um, was something that still sticks with me. And those, those friends that were on that campaign trail with me are still very close to me. So I saved the hardest question for last, okay. and that is how would you describe FBLA PBL in one word? Influential, and I know that's probably not a surprise based on how much I talked about it during our interview, but um, FBLA not only influenced me a lot as a person, a student, a young leader, a young professional, um, it helped me really you know, understand what I wanted to do, but also it, it helped me gain that ability to influence. And that is, I think, one of the hardest things for a young leader to, to learn and adopt. And the fact that I was able to learn that at such a young age and be able to take that into my career has definitely been one of the most positive experiences I've gotten from FBLA. So very influential. Well, thank you, Donnie Iorio, for sharing your experiences during FBLA PBL Week. He served as an FBLA Southern Region Vice President and a two-term PBL National President. Remember to check back here later this week to see some more interviews with FBLA PBL alumni, and be sure to share your story this week with the hashtag FBLA PBL Week. Thank you, Donnie, for joining us here today. Yeah, nice to meet you. And nice to meet you, too. And I look forward to seeing everything that you do for FBLA PBL in the future. Yep, and we'll see you in Baltimore, right? I will do.